little too much, but I've worked with children that were so messed up and so decayed that if somebody came up to them and said, just have confidence in yourself, oh, yeah. you would be wasting your breath. That's, not, think, that's yeah, not what we're that's saying. Not what we're saying. <laughs> it goes more to that. It, it's like, let's go back to that moment and let's go there. Yeah. Oh, we got to be willing to go there. I know about therapy that works, but yeah. I think... Not a pep talk. <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, you need to include that in your thoughts and in your discussion because some people are going to take it at the superficial level right. Right. and it, think yeah. that, oh, if I just think this, and practices, it's going to happen. Well, it's an introductory thing, Edie, that's why I felt called to share yeah. an example that ties into what they're saying. That's what's powerful. And Linda is just I'll chomping just, at the bit because yeah, she's a therapist. Jump up and down. I'm a social worker as well. And one of the thoughts I had, even when we were, you know, talking about law, some conversations you're free to have and some you're not. And I worked in addiction with gang members that had been in and out of prison, very marginalized people, and I still do clinical supervision for populations that are marginalized. And I'll tell you what, when they come in for therapy, they're given a script. My name is, my drug of choices. I've been sober so long. So the freedom to have empowering conversations mm. is very much limited by the environment. And I think as a social worker, I have to say I'm ready to burn my certificate because in the day, social work meant being a voice for the oppressed and looking at the relationship between the individual and social, economic, circumstances, mm. environment. Now, everything is pathology. So one of the things I feel very called to do in my own life is to create healing environments in, like this, mm. where we can have the conversation. Oh. Because it becomes very difficult, I think, in a lot of places, a lot oh. of populations. Oh, yeah. Get the DSM out and you're all set, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can respond in kind. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I never practiced because of the way I felt about it. I practiced to be so mercy. That's why I got into it. I wish I we'll have a discussion. Thank you, Evie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, Chris, I think um, to Chris. We're gonna. Oh, I'll do this in a second. Okay. So if you guys wanna wait until he's done crying, then. Oh, he's oh. fine. He's good. He's reminding so us sweet. of the life force. <laughs> I call that exercising the lungs. <laughs> he might cry while we take him out. Though. Oh, that's, that's okay. Holding him. That's okay. Oh. What I'm actually gonna propose is, um, how about we do Chris and Kaylee? Uh, if there, as long as there's no one else with a burning desire, we'll kind of, you know, wrap this up uh, after these two comments or questions and then Laura and I maybe did you want to and then we can just kind of wrap it up and yeah great okay so you'll Sophia will be the final speaker um, unless Sophia do you want to Chris do you want to go ahead or? I just wanted to sort of piggyback on what the conversation was with Edie and with Sean and with what your goal is Lauren and Sarah is really I think that all of us uh, you know we have the privilege to look at our inner child and what has happened in our lives in the past that are affecting our our lives today. And I think that's really very important. I think it's the crux of, of transformation. <clears throat> so uh, I just wanted to piggyback on that. And you know, for any enlightenment, I believe very strongly that we do need to get into that uh, past to relieve and be with that, whatever it might have been. Um, so, but I think it's a wonderful idea, and it's just uh, amazing what you, what can happen. You know, I see transformations in other people, and it's inspiring. And uh, that's all. Thank right. you. Thank you for being. Real quickly, I just want to say, it's neat. I haven't seen Sophia since I was in Syracuse. We went to the same college together. Yeah. Wow. First time I've seen her in 15 years. No such thing as coincidence. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's a pretty cool thing. <laughs> Which I didn't even realize, but yes, we did. We did go to the same college. Wow. Yes, and of course, uh, just so a little FYI, we went to an environmental school, and I'm sure those were idealistic. Uh, we had we had I idealistic ideas, so you know you kind of you we run with our ideas and whatever we do with it is uh, really the choice that we have. So me just sitting around and listening to other people is my choice. So until I get up and uh, really feel that empowerment is in, is going to be the day that you know other people will will be you know will get something out of it. But in the meantime, I love what. 
that gentleman said that just left with the hat. John. Right. I think that it's very important that we, we can uh, really reflect on, on what we want within ourselves. If it's light, if it's peace, if it's love, you know, we, we, we absolutely, and I have definitely experimented that it comes back to us. It can be in a, you know, in many different levels. Good things. Thank you, Sophia. And it may not come from the person or thing you're giving it to. It will come, though. Right. It, it just shows up, you know, like, oh, yeah. however it's needed in the moment. It's, yeah. Chris. I'll just share that um, the simple instructions from the prophet Isaiah were cease to do evil and learn to do good. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's one of them users oh, okay. that's done here. Seriously. Yeah. That's a great sign. This is Isaiah. Not even the reference, but just the, the phrase. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is really good. Can you just say that one more time? Yeah, let's write it down. Cease to do evil. Mm -hmm. Learn to do good. And learn to do good. I like the Lord part. Yes. Yeah, yes. And well, to elaborate, uh, neuroscience is learning that brain neurons never stop growing. Right. Mm. That is amazing. So you can always create new pathways, yeah? So we can change it at our core. It's possible. It's just a practice. It's like exercise. You you build the muscle. If you found the right paper, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> And you show up at this time with, you have to meet with this person. And, and I just want to piggyback off of Chris a little bit and responding to um, what Valerie was saying earlier. Uh, a dear friend of mine who used to come around this joint, these joints, um, said to me, don't believe the first lie. And, and the first lie is that we're imperfect. Original yeah. So, mm. well, I just wanted to offer. Uh, we have one more person, okay. and then we're gonna. Yeah. Um, well, I um, wanted to go back to what Edie was saying, and I'm kind of upset she's not here because I I'm 19. I mean, I'm probably yeah the youngest like person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, um, she was talking about how uh, it was superficial, I guess. What was she saying was that it was um, superficial to kind of hold these ideals, I guess, was what I understood out of it. And um, because of the, you know, the millions of children who are not you know, able to just hold confidence in yourselves. And um, I, all right, let me back up for a second. I, like I said, I'm 19. I'm a white girl. I grew up in Orchard Park. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very privileged. But um, similar in a way that you said that you put yourself in situations, I had quite a ride um, from like 13 years old to last May. Last May I was in my closet hanging on a belt. Um, I was in a coma for a week. And yeah, well I feel like I, I mean I normally I don't do this, but I just feel like it's really important to put out there how powerful it really is. Um, yeah, like I said, I was um, I was in a coma for about four, four days and then I was in ECMC for two and a half weeks. And this was in May, so I haven't even been out a year yet. And um, I have, I've, I've been in and out of these institutions for years now, um, social workers, clinic workers, drug groups, whatever, you name it. And I have met these awful, like discouraged, worried faces. And it is a lot, I agree, but I don't, think at all that it's impossible that every single one of these people can have this waterfall of revelation and I 
don't like the word revelation because I'm not into all that biblical stuff, but I am, you know, very spiritual. Um, I don't, I don't, but I mean, I really feel like that's where I am in my life at 19 after being at the very lowest a human can bring themselves. And I feel like that's an exact measurement of the height that I can aspire to reach because of that. And I feel like that is so important to hold that true for everyone that's ever seen grief or injustice. And um, that's why, well, I wish she was here because I'm even basically speaking to her when I don't think it's fair to say that it can't happen and that it's the very opposite of superficial. It's very real and it's very possible and I am so, so thankful that we're here talking about it. Well, you know what's and, real? Oh, I just love you all. You know what's real? <laughs> Miracles are real. Yes! Miracles yes. happen every day. So let us all release the need to um, uh, limit our youth. Our youth are so resilient and so brilliant and can, and especially the little ones now are connected to a higher level realm anyway. Why so do you think he's crying when he's talking you know, about being but, going but and expect talking miracles. About love. The more that it's we can all just, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, open up. I just want to throw out there my interpretation of what Edie was saying, and I think it's a very, very valid point and one that's caused a lot of discussion is that it's just a challenge. That it's not yes. possible, yes. or not that it's superficial, but some people are going to hear some words about be empowered, take control of your life, and it's just